Welcome everybody to a new edition of todebate.net. I'm Dirk, one of your two hosts, and I was just joking with Sebastian that he basically got exactly what he wanted. The right position, the right theme, the right motion. There's nothing that is between him and winning another debate. Hi, Sebastian. Are you prepared? Hello. <laughs> well, as you said, I guess the <laughs> flip of the coin was beneficial to me this time. But I, I, this, you say this, but at the same time, when our uh, our listeners will hear the motion, maybe, maybe you know, this is also um, according to what you think. Or maybe we're just kidding everybody and we actually have no opinion at all in that matter. Who knows? Yeah, we don't. Generally, we don't have opinions, right? That's why we have the debating podcast. Uh, this is just <laughs> totally reflective yeah. of our lack of opinion. Yeah, we try to actually form opinions. That's why we do that. What is today's motion, Sebastian? Today's motion is Stanford and Harvard are overrated. And by Stanford so, and Harvard, we basically mean all Ivy League universities, right? So we include Yale probably as well. Princeton, Wharton University. Um, basically all the top tier U.S. universities, but we can include all the U.S. universities in the, in the fold. <laughs> in the fold. Um, you know, let's be generous. You know, it doesn't cost more for us for the debate. You no, know, but all the top tier U.S. universities are overrated. This is our motion today. With a flip of the coin, I will defend that motion. And Dirk, you will be against it and you will start. Yeah, it always has a field day when I have to start. <laughs> I, I prefer it when you start. Okay, let's do this. Dirk goes first and argues against the motion. Stanford and Harvard are hard to overrate. And all the others, by the way, too. Because they offer so much that uh, as society in general, and not even only the US society, actually all of us benefit from, that I don't even know where to start. But let's start with the very low-hanging fruit, which is knowledge and education. It's very prestigious to teach at an Ivy League school. So it's a career path for people that are knowledgeable, that are academics. Ivy League schools are centers of gravity, and they can pick and choose who is allowed to teach at those universities. So the level of education, the level of knowledge coming together in Ivy League schools, for that reason alone, is higher than other universities. Social capital, let's face it, most people go to Ivy League schools for selfish reasons. They want to have a better life, they want to earn more, they want to have a better career. Names like Harvard, Yale and the like produce more millionaires than any other university out there. Another point for the Ivy League schools. Third, research, similar to knowledge and education. If you have the best and the brightest and the most money to spend, then your level of research is better. And you can see that. Uh, Stanford, it's hard to overstate how much influence state for Stanford University had on the creation of the Silicon Valley. And I'm, I, I think you can say there would be no Apple, no Google, no Uber without Stanford University in that region. Research in general, and that's why it's broader than just the US, that of course impacts the globe, it impacts the world, it changed all our lives, and I would argue it changed it for the better. And not even getting into career prospects and all the other aspects, I think those reasons alone are well enough to say Stanford and Harvard are in fact hard to overrate, so people should just um, go with me and be against that motion. <laughs> Now it's Sebastian's turn. Let's hear his argument. In which field are Stanford and Harvard universities? Are they, are they in the education or research business? Or are they just money-making machines? I think and I claim that they're mostly, and their first motivation is probably to make money, except it's not particularly correct to admit it. Not really to make their students more educated. In fact, it's so expensive, it's a ripoff. Uh, I don't have any. I haven't even looked at the at the latest figures, but it's in the hundreds of thousands of dollars to have a full education at Stanford or Harvard. So clearly, um, yes, it produces millionaires because in the first place you're a billionaire. So by the end of the uh, university uh, curriculum, you're probably a millionaire, uh, having spent all that money on Stanford and Harvard. Um, so of course, uh, this is not surprising. But there's one more thing which uh, actually triggered uh, for for us to have this debate today. And that's something I've discovered only lately, and I want people to listen carefully. 
something called legacy admissions. Most U.S. universities, including the top tier ones, except MIT, worth noting, uh, have something called legacy admissions, which means if your father or your mother has attended that university, you get bonus points to be admitted in that university. However, turns out the children of those alumni do not perform better. They actually perform worse than people who have been selected at not random, but based purely on their results. So there's clearly discrimination here. These universities are not meritocratic. I have 30 seconds left, but this is one of the key points of my argument, argument my argumentation about legacy admissions. And I will cover other aspects about how alumni themselves, the ones I have talked to, testify anonymously that even these education curriculum is not worth it. So it's not just me saying, it's people who've gone through those various U.S. universities. I will talk about how talent is everywhere, but opportunity is not. It's around the world. How successful entrepreneurs have not gone to those universities and how most of the content is also online. So I'll cover this in my three minutes later on. And now on to Dirk. Let's hear his rebuttal. So your argument is what? That universities are money-making machines? Boo-hoo. That people that are going to those universities are sometimes going there because of the prestige of the name and that they buy their way into the university? Boo-hoo. Guess what? It doesn't matter. In the results, still, uh, it's a career path for academics to be in Yale, Harvard, you name it. It's prestigious for them to have uh, high-ranking papers published and, and people educated. And in the end, what it produces is that the United States of America right now have a stockpile of accomplishments proving the power of innovation coming out of these universities. So... You can complain all you want. Uh, it's still that uh, universities uh, like Yale, Harvard and the like are not only making money for themselves, they actually pull in brain in quite a significant number from other states. They, they are the source of innovation, source of uh, academic advancements, and they create a beacon, a very light, bright beacon people aspire to be at and get closer to. Even and no precisely because they are money-making machines. Because they have so much money at their disposal to create these impressive campuses and these impressive programs and these impressive uh, studies, people even more so bring their best and their brightest to these institutions. And that is actually the core aspect of it. That's the main reason why they are such a force for good. Other than that, if you want to change something, then maybe we should look into how, especially in the US, people are hired. There's a, a halo effect uh, even into European markets, and I would argue globally, that overemphasize universities like Yale and Harvard for the pure name. So maybe it's worth looking into other means of quality assurance. Accreditation comes to mind. If a university is highly accredited, maybe the name shouldn't play such a dominant role. It shouldn't matter if you're from MIT or Harvard or Stanford, if you can prove that you studied a high degree at a university that's accredited for high quality in education and knowledge and research. That should have, and that's where I agree with you, uh, maybe a higher role than a pure name. But everything else goes for the universities, no matter how much you complain. Having more money is a good thing. Having higher educated people in the staff is a good thing. Having better, better resources from governments as a result is a good thing. All these aspects work for them, not against them. So I, of course, maintain my position. I'm against the motion. <laughs> Next up, Sebastian. Let's hear it. So I think we agree. These universities manage to suck the brain, suck the talent, drain the talent from everywhere else, not just other U.S. states, but around the world, because they have the cash. So it creates this vicious circle of attracting, indeed, maybe some of the best professors, maybe some of the best students. And instead of having those professors and those students study in other continents or other countries, not necessarily their home country. So this is why, and this is thankfully happening because I'm not painting it black or white. In fact, if you look at the uh, Shanghai list of top universities, yes, fair enough, a lot of the US universities are there, but you see a lot of Singaporean, English, German, French universities also in that list of top 100 
or top 200 universities. So it's not that bad. What I'm saying is that there's a, such an overemphasis. Everyone knows about Stanford and Harvard. Do people know about you know, NTU in Singapore? Maybe they know about Oxford and Cambridge in the UK, but that's about it. You know, what do they know about French universities or German universities? And I'm not, I'm not saying it's the, the fault and necessity of these universities, by the way. It's just that there's been so much emphasis on these other American ones. And my point here is that, in fact, we talk about talent, but when I talk to some of the alumni from those univers U.S. universities, and not just the U.S. ones, by the way, I think it's a general criticism of the higher education system, uh, what I hear is that uh, from alumni is that some of the students which were with them during the curriculum, during the courses, should not have been there. Like, they did not speak enough. In you know, the, the English level was not good enough. They were just not qualified enough. So maybe they got in because they had bonus points thanks to daddy and mummy. Um, maybe the content of the, of the courses were not original that much. Or maybe just some of the professors were lazy, just repeating the same stuff. It just, you know, the exams or the assessments were the same ones over and over again every single year. So you just had to memorize and do rote learning instead of actually learning to think critically. So that's my general criticism. And then we have you know, many successful entrepreneurs who managed to build you know, Facebook. You know, he did go Zuckerberg to Harvard, but never graduated. Same for uh, Bill Gates. So you know, at the end of the day, what is the system does really provide? It's not, it's not very clear to me. Um, and most of the content from these universities nowadays is online and free. So there's no really point in paying a lot of money, except if you're lazy. Right? If you don't have the discipline to actually go through the program, then yeah, go ahead and pay $100,000 or more to actually go through the program. And finally, I want to raise something which is going to be a nice transition to our next episode. I always love to do this and you know, back and forth the references to our episodes. And the thing is, what I've noticed by reading the, the media is that it seems to be forcing children to do too many extracurricular activities you know, when they're teenagers so that they can have so many points to qualify for these Ivy League universities so children become robots right, who are perfect uh, and you know, probably going to kill their fellow students because they go crazy. Uh, and they've you know, played too many video games or have access to guns in the US. But you know, joke aside, you, know, you create you know, children who are so overqualified even before entering university. So of course they're going to succeed at university. But you've stripped out their life from them, their creativity. And I'm not sure you know, this is the best way to educate children or, or future uh, adults. So that's, these are my arguments to say those universities are overrated. Final statements. Dirk goes first. So basically what you're pointing out is Harvard, Yale, those top-notch Ivy League universities, they are better at marketing than others. That may be the case. I give you that. Having said that, I never ever had any problems telling somebody that my degree is from the University of Liverpool. And people looked at me with the same level of positive uh, um, response that I would probably have gathered from a U.S. university when I'm living in the U.S. So I'm not sure that this argument cuts. The other argument you were making is about creating robots out of students. Well, I'm not following that either, because either, either it's too simple to get through those degrees or it's too hard. You have to make up your mind. And that's the other thing. Of course, people completing degrees tell you how easy it was. That's like, uh, oh, I don't want to be a member of a club where people let me in. So once you make it into those universities, probably you have a real shot at uh, completing it. So I don't follow that argument either. In the end, universities, um, those universities bring more than they cost and they totally are worth it. Sebastian. I think if you said that they're, you recognize they're better at marketing, then I think you've proven my point because the point of being overrated is to say there's too much marketing and not enough content in comparison. Overrated does not mean it's not good. I'm not saying Harvard and Stanford are not good. I'm just saying it, it's exaggerated to put so much emphasis when you have other very good universities. And I don't agree. I don't think people know other universities as much. And people look at you the same way because you're tall. So they look up towards you. That's why, Dirk, this is the only reason why there's no, nothing else. I didn't say that it was too easy. Um, I'm saying that uh, people like, and, and I actually have uh, ex-team members, I should not say whom, but who have been admitted to some of the most prestigious MBAs around the planet, not just American ones. But overall, I have a big issue, and as I had mentioned this uh, earlier on, with these legacy admissions. The bonus points you get because your daddy or your mummy has gone to that university, and this should be known that this is 
the standard practice in the US except MIT. Uh, so Stanford, Yale, Harvard, and this is for me a disgrace and not meritocratic. So please vote, please vote for the motion. These universities are overrated. I wanna have as many votes as you can on the webpage to debate.net. Thank you very much. You know, the, the debate is over, but I'm still arguing for the motion. <laughs> and that complaining that I go over time. That's so unfair. Thanks, everyone. That was today's debate. We do maintain our position. You have to vote on todaydebate.net. Yeah, debate. for me. For the little thumbs no, up. No, thumbs down. Thumbs up. Thumbs down. Thumbs up for <laughs> voting for the motion. <laughs> these U.S. universities are overrated. Uh, 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 uh. And if you're American, or if you've been to these U.S. universities, you can still vote in favor of the motion. You can still recognize that what I say is true because your vote is anonymous. And after, you, will after you track your IP address. After you voted. Not yet. After you voted for Sebastian or for me. Um, no, you actually uh, don't vote for Sebastian or for me. After you agree or disagree with our motion, which was Stanford and Harvard are overrated, we really, really welcome you or love to welcome you in our Facebook page and the discussion thread if you're on Facebook or on Twitter if you prefer that or on Reddit or wherever you get your social media juice from. Let us know what your arguments would have been, what would have won you over to the other side. Um, it was a blast, Sebastian, to debate this one with you. Thanks, everyone, for listening in. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, by the way, just because a university has better marketing, uh, that does not mean that they're not superior in their in their product as well. Agreed, but apart from Apple, who's who, who, which company is aligned between marketing and actual actual quality of the product? I would argue apart not Apple. even Apple. <laughs> not even, okay, not even, I, I was trying to anticipate just in case you were you're you're going to give me that example. But tell me which which company is exactly aligned with the hype they give with their marketing and the product or the service they deliver it. Accomplishing a degree is 90% work and 10% talent. I believe the pure fact that the person was able to sit through the degree and actually read the stuff that they get and maybe write some paper puts them in the half of the population that usually finishes degrees. I don't even know if people read the case studies to the end. I'm not, I'm not joking. I've, you know, I've done an MBA, not a, not a well-known one. I've been to an elite French university. I've been to many training courses at Google and other companies. I'm shocked. You know, supposedly the best people are the smartest people on the planet. And I know maybe this goes counter to the general, you know, feeling that people like seem to be so grateful to be among smart people. Um, so maybe they sound horribly arrogant, but I'm, I'm honest here. I have observed this around me. People are lazy. They don't do their homework. Or if they do it, they do it at the last minute. For training sessions, which are paid by the employer, or the MBA is just to get a degree and access to the alumni network. They don't give a they don't give a mm, about the actual homework. It, it not everyone, not everyone, but most of the people that I have seen around me and people testifying about the quality and whether it's, it was worth it or not. And of course, they, there's there's value in it, but for other reasons. For instance, alumni network. Right? If you get to Stanford, obviously because it has it is such a, so appealing, you will have to superb access of alumni. Right, so this is very nice. But the thing is, maybe the, the reason why we, we may not be disagree here is that, or maybe maybe why we have a different viewpoint, you and I, is that because you care about the content, you care about doing actually studying, right? You care about doing a real thesis, and it's not just it's not you're not trying to rip off or, or pretend that you have the thesis. But I don't think that's a general rule. That's my problem. In fact, I'm so shocked and so I'm still frustrated. 14 years after graduating from my uh, engineering university in France, that I have, I share the same degree as my fellow colleagues who have done nothing because the same exam was given every year, almost. You know, just changing a few values. Right? And I, I was, I'm not that smart. I'm a hard worker. Yes, I had to, and I wanted to really learn a, a few things, but it was not necessary to actually get the degree. You just had to, you know, read through the documents the day before the exam. 
And that was an elite university. It was not some just standard university. I can't even imagine, start to imagine a low level university, which was probably, actually was probably, probably harder to get a degree because, you know, there's less publicity about these universities. And once you have reached or have access to a, a high end university, then they're not going to fire everyone because you don't do your homework. Otherwise, they would fire everyone. Nobody does the homework. Like 90%, I can easily say that, let's say, okay, 80% of the students are not serious. They're not really doing the, the stuff. They work on Facebook on the site, right? They work on <laughs> hot or not about female students on the campus. Hot or what not, Facebook. what is that? Hot or not, this is what, Facebook, what Zuckerberg did initially on Harvard. Yeah, you know, having all the photos of yeah, the female students Zuckerberg, on the campus. Zuckerberg, uh, you can argue um, the. But he, he's maybe very good. The at, return at, on like, invest was a good at, one. From a business perspective, I'm just saying, you know, the, these campuses are basically like just huge, you know, grounds for partying for most people. Whatever the whatever the elite status of the university. But I'm, I'm, I'm not that kind of person. But it was around me. Maybe we should qu- maybe we should quit our jobs and do party at Harvard for a while. No, but we can create a university, but let's not call it a university, let's call it whatever.